Hi all, today we are going to discuss about a wet shape film. It's a topic come under interference in thin film. Already we have done some videos related with the interference in thin film. What is meant by a wet shape film? A wet shape film is a thin film of varying thickness that has surfaces inclined at small angles. For a film to be thin, the condition is that the thickness of the film must be of the order of one wavelength of light. How can we make a wet shape film? For that, we are taking two glass lights. These glass lights are kept one over the another. In such a way that at one end, they will touch each other. And at the other end, with the help of a spacer, we are making these glass lights inclined at small angles. This spacer can be a thin piece of paper, uh, a thin wire, uh, a cello tape, etc. So when these glass lights are inclined at small angles, a thin air film is formed between these two glass lights and this thin film of varying thickness is known as wet shape film. If you put a drop of liquid between these two glass lights, that will be a liquid film of varying thickness. Now, the thickness of the film is zero at the contacting end, that is at the vertex, and the thickness will increase progressively from the contacting end to the other end. How the interference is produced in the wet shape film? When light is incident on this wet shape film, the light get reflected from the top of the film. And some light will go downwards and it will get reflected from the bottom surface of the film. Then these two reflector rays will superimpose each other and this superposition of light will produce interference. To find the conditions for brightness and darkness in wet shape film, first we have to find out the optical path difference between light reflected from the top surface and bottom surface of the film. Top surface of the film occurs at a glass to air boundary. Bottom surface of the film is from air to glass boundary. From the point E, we can draw a normal to the light reflected from the top surface of the film. AB is the incident ray. BC is the light reflected from the top surface of film. Then the BD is the refractor ray into the film. This DEF is the reflector ray from the bottom surface of the film. So the extra path traveled by the second light ray is BD plus D and the extra path traveled by the first light ray in comparison with the second light ray is this BN. So the path difference between the two light ray from top and bottom surface is BD plus DE in film minus this BN in air. The optical path difference means if it is in a medium, we have to multiply that distance with the refractive index of that medium. So this in film, the path will be mu into BD plus D minus here we are taking the air as the outer environment. So this BN into refractive index of the air that is 1. So this will be BN. This angle of incidence will be same as the angle of reflection. Then we can denote this angle also as I. This is the normal. So this will be 90 minus I. This EN is drawn normal to BC. So this angle is 90 degree. So this is 90 minus I. It's 90. So this will be I. We can also draw one more normal from E to this BD. Let this point B M. So this E M is perpendicular to B D. Here this angle is angle of refraction. So this angle will be 90 minus R. Here we have drawn this E M as normal to B D. So this will be 90. So this angle is 90. Here it is 90 minus R. So this will be angle R that is angle of refraction. You know, the refractive index of the film according to Snell's law is mu is equal to sin i divided by sin r. Now consider the triangle B E N. What will be the sin i? Sin i will be opposite side B E N divided by hypotenuse that is B E divided by sin r. 
what will be the sin r from triangle b m e that will be b m divided by b e so sin r we can write as b m divided by b e so this b e and b e will cancel so the b n will be equal to mu into b m so we can write this b n as mu into b m here it is equal to mu into b d what is b d here look the diagram b m plus m d so b d is b m plus m d plus d e now this mu b m and this mu b m will cancel so we will get this optical path difference as mu into m d plus d e now we have to find out this m d plus d e how can we find out this m d plus d e to make it simple we can make a triangle in the downward direction which will be congruent to this triangle d e o at the point o the thickness of the film is t so we are extending a line from the point o to downward direction with the a length of thickness t let this point be p now we can extend the line from the point d to the point p now look here this triangle dpo is congruent to the triangle deo how we made this congruent triangle by extending a line from the point o to downward direction with the length of that line as same as the thickness of the thin film at the point o that is this eo is t and also this op is equal to t now the triangle deo and triangle dpo are congruent so we can write this side de same as this side dp so de is equal to dp so here we can write this de as dp so this expression become mu into md plus dp now look here what is this md plus dp that we can write as mp so this optical path difference becomes mu into mp now to find out this length mp we can consider the right angled triangle p m e in the triangle p m e this angle is 90 degree because this e m is normal to b d now look here this angle is angle of refraction r it is a normal so this angle will be 90 degree this is theta so this will be 90 minus r plus theta because the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degree here it is 90 degree r theta so this angle will be 90 minus r plus theta if this is 90 minus r plus t this red dotted line is a normal so this angle will be r plus theta if it is r plus theta this angle will be r plus theta and also this angle will be r plus theta now consider the triangle p m e what will be cos r plus theta this cos r plus theta from the triangle p m e will be adjacent side p m divided by this hypotenuse that is e p now what is e p e p is e o plus o p this e o and o p are same that is equal to thickness of the film so this e o plus o p is t plus t that is 2t so we can write this cos r plus theta as pm divided by 2t or pm is equal to 2t into cos r plus theta so what will be the optical path difference that will be delta is equal to mu mp so mu into 2t cos r plus 
theta. So this is the optical path difference between the light reflected from the top and the bottom surface of the film. Now we have to check is there any phase change occurs due to Stokes law. What is Stokes law? If the light is reflected at the rarer to the denser boundary, there will be a phase change of pi that corresponding to a path difference of lambda by 2. Here look the top surface of the film. Here it is at a glass to air boundary that is denser to rarer medium. There will be no phase change of pi. But at the bottom surface of the film, the light reflected from the rarer to denser boundary that is air to glass boundary. So there will be a phase change of pi occurs. So the light reflected from the bottom surface of the film undergoes a phase change of pi since the reflection takes place at the rarer to denser boundary. This Stokes law we have also seen in the parallel thin film. So due to Stokes law, there will be a path correction of lambda by 2. So the corrected path difference is delta is equal to 2 mu t cos r plus theta plus lambda by 2 or minus lambda by 2. Now we can find out the condition for brightness and darkness. What is the condition for brightness? For that the path difference must be an integral multiple of wavelength lambda. So here the path difference is 2 mu t cos r plus theta plus or minus lambda by 2 is equal to m lambda that is 2 mu t cos r plus theta is equal to m minus or plus 1 by 2 lambda or we can write it as 2 m minus or plus 1 lambda by 2. So the condition for brightness is 2 mu t cos r plus theta 2 m minus 1 or plus 1 lambda by 2. Similarly the condition for darkness is the optical path difference must be an odd multiple of lambda by 2 that is 2 mu t cos r plus theta plus or minus lambda by 2 is equal to 2m plus or minus 1 lambda by 2 that is 2 mu t cos r plus theta is equal to 2m plus or minus 1 or minus or plus 1 lambda by 2 on solving this we are getting it as m lambda that is 2 mu t cos r plus theta is equal to m lambda. So the condition for brightness is 2 mu t cos r plus theta equal to 2 m plus or minus 1 lambda by 2 or condition for darkness is 2 mu t cos r plus theta equal to m lambda. Here if we are uh, taking 2 m minus 1 start m as uh, 1 if you are taking 2 m plus 1 start m as 0. In short this 2 m minus 1 or plus 1 the minimum value is 1. Usually this angle of vertice theta is very small because uh, we are taking a spacer of uh, very few micrometers then only we can say that film as a thin film. So this angle of width is of the order of seconds. So this as the angle of vertice theta is very small we can also approximate this condition of brightness as 2 mu t cos r is equal to 2 m minus or plus 1 lambda by 2 and darkness as 2 mu t cos r is equal to m lambda. And for normal incidence of light what will be this angle of refraction? This angle of refraction is 0. Then this expression become this 2 mu t cos r plus theta we can write as 2 mu t because r is 0 and theta is very small this cos r plus theta term become 1. So for normal incidence of light we are taking the condition for brightness as 2 mu t equal to an order multiple of lambda by 2 and darkness uh, 2 mu t is equal to m lambda. What will be the nature of the interference pattern in wet shape film that will be of alternate bright and dark bands. Why they are straight lines? Because the locus of all points having same thickness comes in a straight line. The nature of the interference pattern, the expression for the fringe width etc. We have ex discussed already in another video about a wet shape film uh, that you can see in the playlist of interference. Okay, bye bye.